Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone, and welcome back to the Umarpreneur Live podcast. And in this very special episode, I'm interviewing none other than Brother Kamal. Now, Kamal Ali is the inventor of the world's first interactive prayer mat. I've been following these guys for over a year, and the, min the minute that I really saw their product, it was something that caught my mm -hmm. eye, and I really felt like this was a very interesting and creative solution to help teach children the importance of prayer and specifically how to pray. And to give you guys a little bit of info uh, about Kamal's company in My Salamat, they started in 2018. They quickly grew to serve Muslims in over 20 countries and 15 languages. And this interactive prayer mat, what it does is it helps kids learn how to pray Salah in a fun and interactive way. It actually teaches them the positions, what to say during prayer, where to place their hands, knees, and feet. And all they have to do is really just get on and kind of follow along, which is amazing, mashallah. So, come on, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, bro. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, man. Honestly, the pleasure is all mine. And I've been wanting to really have this discussion for a while. So I'm really, really happy that we we finally get to do this, to be honest. This, has been a, this is like one of those episodes that's been on my list for a very long time, ever since I started this podcast. And I've been looking forward to it the whole time. Uh, so I'm really excited, inshallah. And I think uh, the best place for us to start, and this is where I like to start with every guest, is if you could share with us the story of what inspired you to even become an entrepreneur. What led you to, you know, gravitate towards starting your own business? Um, I have to go back uh, many, many years for that. Uh, alhamdulillah. Um, I, I think I've always been um, kind of interested in, um, I think, like, I, the way I would say it was, like, serving people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, I've done quite a lot of serving jobs. I, I worked in restaurants and takeaways. And um, whenever I've developed a product, whenever I've uh, designed something or thought of taking something into business, I always thought, I always think about how will this benefit people and how will it make somebody else's life a little bit easier or a little bit better. Um, and I think that's always been there with me you know throughout mm. university throughout uh, my uh, postgraduate degree it's always been that element of um you know can i can i can i produce something can i can i get something out there that will help a lot of people right. um and you know for me from from kind of like university days um i've been i've been very much um in tune with with my dean um, you know, with my, with my religion. And I think um, that's been, um, you know, the, the most, one of the, the most important things in my life. Um, you know, um, growing up, it's always been um, the, the thing that's given me answers to problems or helped me, help me with solutions um, to problems. And um, for me to be in this position right now today is like, you know, it's duas come true that I'm able mm. to um, do what I've been trained in as a product designer and fulfill, um, you know, be able to um, help um, children with one of the pillars of Islam. You know, yeah. Salam. Mashallah, that's amazing, man. And honestly, it's such a great idea and a beautiful idea. I love that you started with service, essentially really talking about the fact that you know, this all stemmed from trying to combine what you're passionate about. And I think that's where the best ideas stem from. And for me as well, my journey with entrepreneurship initially started with a marketing agency and a blog and a, and a media company. And eventually it really gravitated towards, well, how can I really combine all these things that I'm passionate about, including my Dean into something that I'm excited to work on every day. And that's where the idea for entrepreneur came about. And I think when you find that, uh, it really is a special feeling. And then to, to be able to work on that is always beautiful, mashallah. And you've done that very successfully with uh, my Salamat. And at the stage where you decided you wanted to create this product, were you already working a job? Did you already have, were you going to school? Were you at a stage where you had kind of had to make a decision between starting this business or continuing uh, in your current path? Or did you already know this is what you're going to do? Yeah. So like my background would be, um, I, I, I've done quite a few different uh, projects mm -hmm. and uh, a few different, um, um, you know, from even from university days. Um, but the, where I was work, I'm still am actually working on a company called Hajsafe. Have you, okay. did you come across that hajsafe.com? No. So no. hajsafe was like, okay. oh, this was amazing. Like basically um, um, a friend 
phoned me one day and he was like, you know, and it, this is quite sad actually how it started. Um, and he was like, oh, my, my relative was, was, was in Mecca and um, had his bag cut and all of his belongings were taken. And I was like, wow, I was shocked as everybody is. Um, and we don't, we don't, you know, everybody, everybody, um, we don't know what people are going through, but, yeah. um, and he was like, isn't there a solution for this? So I went and I used my kind of skills and we developed Hajsay, which was a, 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 a um, travel belt, which had a wire reinforced uh, where you, you know, you couldn't cut it. But when I looked into the market, so I looked into the Muslim market, it, it had products that were just like, I was like, what is this? Why is this being sold? Because it's, it's so flimsy, it's going to break, the materials are rubbish, it's not being designed properly for the user, they're going to go on this amazing journey and they're using this mm. like piece of cloth. Um, so, um, so I then went on kind of a, a kind of a mission to design products that were like really, you know, good quality, affordable, but also safe for people going for Hajj. And subhanAllah, it was amazing because I had this product. It was already it was a prototype. And uh, me and my wife, we made plans to go to Hajj and, you know, we paid the deposit and everything. And alhamdulillah, it happened. And we're like going to Hajj and I've got this product in front of me. I was like, I'm going to take it with me took it to Hajj with me and uh, I used it from the minute I left the house to the minute I came home. I used it every, um, you know, every one of those minutes. And um, I, when I came back, I thought, you know what, this helped me a lot. And this is going to help so many more people, inshallah. I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to like put all my money into this and, um, mm. and, uh, and, and, and get this produced. It was a lot of money. Um, yeah. And, um, it was it's scary. It's always scary. And um, subhanAllah, we had the product come in two weeks before Hajj. Me and my friend, we went around the UK, driving around all these Islamic shops. And we sold every single one of the products within those two weeks. Wow. And we're Mashallah. like, wow, this is amazing. So that was the start of my journey um, of serving kind of Muslims, um, pilgrims you know um wow. you know, guests of allah i was like wow i'm like helping the guests of allah um and alhamdulillah that's still going but un unfortunately because of the pandemic um because of covid um has there's been no hash for the last two years mm -hmm. so that's been on the on the on the on the um, standstill for a while right i understand and that was before you created my salama that's right right so like so this is why i always say to people like when you like like when you think of an idea, like when you've got an idea, don't think like at the end of it, like that's going to be it. That's it. Because, you know, it's always a stepping stone. Like Allah has like amazing plans for everybody. Right. And you just have to put your trust in Allah. Um, Hajj Safe never made a profit. Like, it, it, I mean, it made it made a profit, but I never took a salary out of it. I would always reinvest that profit into buying more products and more products. Right. And I would like. Mm -hmm. use it for marketing and offices and things like that and i could have just given that up like at any moment i could have been like oh it's not it's not making a salary i still have to work i was working as a teacher at that time so i okay. still had to work as a um as a secondary school teacher full time i was still doing hajj save on the evenings and weekends i was like i could have just stopped but i just loved hajj like when i went to hajj it was like the best thing ever you know it like completely like balanced me focused me you know, it gave me a purpose. It gave me an understanding of what that, why, why that purpose is there. So, for me, it was like I just continued that going, um, and I did lots of teaching jobs while I was while I was uh, doing Hajj Day. We went to Egypt. I, uh, me, me and the family, we went to Egypt. I had a teaching job over there, um, and I thought, you know what, I need to get myself a, like a proper job. I need to start earning. Um, Hajj Day was then like kind of just slowly managed, um, but I was working in Egypt for about two years. And then I came back to the UK. When I came back, I was like, look, I can't, I don't want to go back into teaching. I'm going to go full time into this. And I went full time into Hajj Safe. And I was doing Hajj Safe and Alhamdulillah, it was doing really well. Um, and uh, and then um, at that time, my, my son, he was like three years old. And uh, this is where this, the idea for my salama came about. And he's praying with me. And, um, and he's next to me. And then I'm noticing that he, he's not, managing to do sujood i'm like okay so mm. uh so i like after the prayer i'm like oh okay, you know this is how you do sujood and he was like trying to do it and he's like putting his hands out and he's like lying on the floor and i was like oh you know mashallah it's really cute but i was like okay so how can i like i've got my product design head and i'm like like 
I just need a prayer mat that has like hands, feet and nose and he would be able to get that. So yeah. I um I'm sat in front of the TV one day and that problem, like like that kind of situation came to my head. And I was like, oh, okay, hold on a second. Let me try and find him something. I went onto Amazon, eBay and all of these kind of like did a Google search and didn't find nothing. So couldn't, I was like, what? what's going on here now? Why isn't there something that already exists for kids? I'm like, what? this is crazy. So, um, and we're talking about three years back now. I mean, since then there's been those like yeah. masks designed for kids, but they're not like the way we designed it with the hands and those just the, the educational aspect of it. And I was like, oh, okay then. So I got my design software out. I started designing. I was like, this is what we want. This is what we need. We need this. So I uh, used my contacts from Hatch Safe Times to get a sample made. And when the sample yeah. came, I had all of these feet and then I had all of these like words on the sides, like Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, uh, things that they would need to know during Salah. I was like, why we could push these and these could be become buttons and we can actually get sounds out and make it even more interactive and then the second stage of the design process started where we were looking for somebody to um to put sound into it and things like that and then we had it translated because uh, we wanted it in lots of different languages we wanted lots of people to experience this and lots of children to benefit from it and since then we've just been growing alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah. So for someone listening to this, I have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast. Um, you know, you, Michelle, you make it sound so simple. Like this is the idea. We get, we did it, put the voice in it. We did what we needed to do. Bam. And of course I know like sharing that it's an overview, but I know that this was probably a journey that took you months and lots of trial and error and lots of challenges and obstacles that you had to overcome. So I want to know for someone listening to this, what can they expect if they have an idea and they want to turn it into reality? What is it? What are the steps they need to take? And what are some of the challenges they might face? You know, in your experience, maybe some tips we can give them uh, that they should maybe look out for. Yeah. So like like these days, I mean, I don't know. I didn't experience any of this when I first started. I am experiencing a lot of it right now is that people are just like stealing designs and contact um, ideas. Right. They just, mm. you know, you, you show your design to a factory and you think, OK, they're going to like be professional about it. But a lot of these some of these factories now, I mean, only the other day I heard a horror story where a sister was like, I got this idea. I was like, oh, it's an amazing idea. And she was like, okay. And then like the process to find a manufacturer um, is as simple as going onto alibaba.com, typing in the pro like similar kind of product that you're looking for. So if, you're, if you've designed a book or um, an interactive book, or you've designed, I don't know, a toy of some sort, something similar, find a manufacturer that makes something similar to that. And then it's the case of showing the, the manufacturer the design and getting that kind of prototype you have to pay for the sample and everything. No, nothing's yeah. for free. Um, and usually that's that's how it works. But now, mm -hmm. I mean, the sister was like, I only showed a brief design to this to this factory. And two days later, they, they send me an email saying, we've had loads of inquiries for this design and we're making it. I was like, what? So the first thing I would say to, to anybody would be to get like um, an NDA, a non-disclosure um, mm. um, signed by by the factory. So um, you, usually it kind of like, it kind of like sets the kind of, the, the, the kind of like, you know, the what they should expect right. from you, that you're going right. to be professional, you're going to take the legal route if there's anything, any issues, um, that you're quite serious about it. So that's what I would do initially. Um, and then, uh, before you even show a factory your design or ideas, just look out, look for what's out there already. Why is the product um, uh, better than the competition? Why, um, you know, why will people want to buy it? You know, are you going to be able to get it at the kind of similar price point? Um, you know, if not, then why is, well, what advantages are there to selling it for higher price and things like that? So, um, like, research is so important. I mean, I, can, I can't mm. underestimate how important doing your own research initially is and then also finding manufacturers that don't don't um necessarily uh provide for people in your industry so for example mm. if you're um producing something for the muslim industry um for muslims finding a manufacturer that doesn't necessarily make for muslims because what happens in those situations is that because the manufacturer already makes for muslims and has that has that platform uh, to quickly get products out, they they they're more likely to to take your ideas and um, mm. and make them and reproduce them. Right, that makes sense. And and you guys, uh, you know, how how have you dealt with other companies 
uh, because now you know, mashallah, my salamat has been has been growing exponentially every year, mashallah ta'ala, and it is a great product. It's a great idea, and clearly the uh, you know the, the proof of concept is there. Essentially, you guys you guys were the first to market, and you, and you created something amazing. And there's clearly a need for that. And sometimes when that happens, and when you're the first to, to release a product and something innovative like this, other companies will tag along and they'll try to make you know other iterations of the product, copies of your product, um, you know, and fake uh, fake versions of it essentially. How have you guys dealt with that? And and you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs even that could reach out to me. They're like, you know, someone else is trying to copy what we're doing, and you know, it's always stressful for us as business owners when we're the first to market, and then you know, someone else comes along, and they're like, oh, great idea, I'll take it. So, how have you dealt with that in your experience? Uh, it's been really, it's been a struggle to be honest, um, especially mm. in the beginning when it happens to you. It's like, wow, like what do I do? It's like a it's a minefield, right? The, the whole yeah. IP um, kind of industry is a minefield. Um, so we've learned, I've learned a lot, like doing this, I've learned a lot, Unfor uh, you know, un unfortunately, because of this situation. So the first thing that we did was we had our, um, our logo trademarked, okay? So the, our brand name was trademarked. And uh, one of the things I read, uh, that quickly realized is that trademark is only like kind of acceptable in that country that is registered in. So essentially you have to register it in lots of different countries and alhamdulillah like oh my god you won't believe how many thousands i've spent on trademarking um like okay so like one example this is so this is so crazy so um getting a trademark in the uk is quite a simple process quite a simple application it'll cost you 165 pounds and it's well worth the money right so it's trademarked in the uk for me to get a trademark in the uae which i have done um required me to get a solicitor the solicitor sent me a power attorney which a piece of paper which had to be then uh notarized um which i never knew what that meant until <laughs> until now which is a, a really like kind of an old traditional way of certifying that that document is 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 you know is, mm -hmm. is a, original right. um that had to then be sent to uh, the foreign commonwealth office in the uk who then stamped it then it had to be sent to the uae uh, embassy who then stamped it uh, that whole process took me to cost me about 700 pounds before i even then posted that document back to the uae the legal solicitors and then um then they went through that whole process the application cost i think was like in excess of like four thousand dollars so just to get one trademark in the UAE, it cost me thousands of dollars. It was it was absolutely crazy, but it was well worth. Like for me, it was really worth it because what happened was, and this is where they went wrong, was that a lot of these uh, these factories basically saw that the product was amazing, the branding was amazing. It was like, wow, everybody's asking for my salama. Nobody's asking for you know a prema or you know a interactive prema. They're asking for a my salama. So mm. uh, alhamdulillah, like my salama came became the name. To represent interactive prayer which was absolutely amazing for for right. me i was like wow that's that's like that's like how we say like hoover in the uk but it's really a right. vacuum cleaner but hoover is the brand but we all call it a hoover so We're like um, kleenex here in north america kleenex is napkins we call them kleenex so that's it it's the default yeah right <laughs> it's awesome so i was like yeah. wow my salama so they copied like everything they copied the branding the design the photos uh they took the product they copied the voice and that's where they they, they, they went wrong in lots of fields because we had our design registered. So not many companies do this. We had the actual design of it. Technically, if you design something or you sing something or you draw something, it's your IP, it's your copyright. Uh, mm. There's a there's a unreg there's a there's something called an unregistered uh, copyright. You own that because you did it. Mm. You have to prove it. But you you can also go for a legal process, like a, a registered process to have that design registered. Now the mm. design doesn't need to be registered in lots of different countries. So I would highly recommend anybody who's got a design, register it in your country. Because once it's registered, it's actually uh, registered everywhere. So they mm. can't actually, uh, nobody else can copy that actual design. So they, we had our design registered. We knew we had the, uh, we had the uh, copyright of the audio. So it was just a case, and it still is, a case of uh, locating people who are selling kind of their products and reporting them, whether that's on Facebook, Instagram, on uh, Alibaba, on, uh, on Amazon, on eBay, on any of these platforms. Also, um, you know, people have created websites selling these fakes and things like that, which is a little bit more trickier, but um, it's just a long process, unfortunately. For sure. And it sounds like you'd need, you'd probably need someone like full time on this, just like looking around and, and you know, scouting for that, and it's a big job. So for you, 
do you feel like this whole process, and I'm going to ask you a tricky question here because, you know, for a lot of us startup entrepreneurs, it's like they only, they already have limited resources. If you're starting off, do you feel like it is something that you should do and you should look out for, and you should go through reporting it, or should you focus on just getting bigger and, and, and focusing on growing your own company? Like for you and your experience, what was the stage where you, you start, you started to see, okay, this is probably a problem that I need to address. Right. Was it immediately or was it was it no. later in the future in your company? It, it wasn't immediately. I mean, immediately I got a few um, trademarks registered in a few countries where I could see uh, counterfeits coming up, like the UAE and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so immediately I got the trademark registered in those countries. But I didn't see it as a as as a, the, you know, the enormous problem it is right now. Maybe right. Uh, maybe until like six months uh, after. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it's never too late. And. I would always say, I mean, look, like we were like in, we were like in the market for about a year, about a year until, until people started, until, you know, kind of fits came out. So we weren't actually in the market for too long, but alhamdulillah, we were, we grew pretty fast and um, the demand was there. Um, I would definitely say if for us, it's definitely worthwhile making sure we're planning ahead and making sure we are, we are, we are growing. But the, at the same time, making sure that these counterfeits and these kind of fake um, products um, are taken off. I, I, right. and I'll tell you why. Because we right now, we get emails from people and saying, oh, I bought this my salama and it's broken on me. I'm like, okay. Um, so I look into it. I'm like, where did you buy it from? Oh, I got it from um, this website. And then we look into it. Like, that's not our product. You know, that's mm. a fake. And what's happening is in, unless we we kind of remove, get them removed and people stop people from selling them. We, our kind of brand reputation is being ruined by wow. these knockoffs mm. because these knockoffs are like, uh, you know, they, they, they call knockoffs for a reason, right? Because, because they're made from cheap material. They're made really poorly. Um, you know, they, they don't have the safety standards that we have. We have for safe, for children's toys, safety certificates, you have to pay an annual fee. So every year we pay a fee to have that, tested every year and certified and everything they're not doing that um mm. they're not using the right materials a lot of these materials are uh, very poor quality materials we use like fire resistant and waterproof material because the whole mat is has a circuit on it so mm. it has like um and we didn't want the circuit to to have any kind of electrical um issues so so um for us it's really important um in for the brand to grow because it only takes one person to put something on social media and say oh, i bought this by salama and it's rubbish and it goes viral and that's it you know yeah. so um you know alhamdulillah we've been fortunate the other way we're alhamdulillah lots of people have bought the original my salama and said it's amazing and alhamdulillah that's gone viral mm -hmm. um but that's where the issue came actually yeah. is when we went viral so <laughs> going viral isn't always the best because we went viral double-edged sword right yeah, we went viral in the mm. Middle East and, and uh, subhanAllah, it was like crazy that day. And um, as soon as we went viral, that's it. Like like literally the month after we started seeing counterfeits and issues. With that. Wow, subhanAllah. So uh, this is a really an interesting issue that we're bringing up and interesting discussion on the podcast because I think, you know, so many entrepreneurs go through this in different ways and it is always frustrating. I mean, there's one of my clients that uh, I consult with and um, she had this issue as well happen to her. And she, um, you know, she actually, um, I'm gonna give her a shout out. She <laughs> runs uh, My First Masjid. Uh, and it's actually ah, yes. yeah. to what you have behind you. I think you may be familiar with it, which is awesome. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. So what we have behind you, they create those, right? They create these like, you know, yeah. you can build your own masjids at home. And exactly, you can do those uh, beautiful designs with your kids. And it's really, really nice. And can she I show has you a lot something? Of... Very yes, quickly, go ahead. Can I show you something? Go ahead. Please, second. please go for it. This, wow. is a, this is the original. This is the original. My first masjid designed uniquely just for my salama. Amazing, amazing, yeah. mashallah. So wow, a quick shout out there. So I love the connections there, subhanallah. That's amazing. And she, you know, she does this beautiful product, which you know clearly you're using as well, which is awesome. And you know, sometimes we were talking, and she was like, you know, there's sometimes other companies that pop up. Same thing, counterfeits. Uh, you know, just copying the idea blatantly. And then, you know, it's like, how do I deal with that? It's frustrating, right? It's frustrating, mm -hmm. especially when maybe you don't have the necessarily necessarily the resources to address that issue um, and, or take legal recourse or, or, you know, go in that direction. And so I, I like that we're bringing up this discussion. And I think I want to also touch upon it from a mindset perspective, because clearly, you know, if 
And that is something that's happening. It's going to maybe affect your own mindset as the business owner and, you know, maybe cause some fear or some anxiety or some insecurity. So how have you dealt with that from a mindset perspective? I want to know the mentality behind, you know, dealing and overcoming with people trying to copy your product. Uh, this is amazing. This is amazing because honestly, like, um, I feel as if, you know, there's so many things that happened in my life um, that has got me ready for this. And that last put me through all those situations, right? You know, yeah. me going for Hajj, um, you know, um, you know, getting married, going to Hajj, having kids, you know, all of those things. I mean, there's so many other things, my, my parents, my dad, my mom, you know, um, it, it kind of like, so all of those things that I've, I've gone through and, and, and my own research into looking, you know, uh, finding answers to problems of, that I faced in the past using Islam, um, the Quran and Hadith uh, to answer that. And for me, like, this is just like, OK, so for me, it's like the way I deal with it is um, my life, like I as a, as, a, as a Muslim, I just need to get through. And it's, it's, it might sound big. I, I haven't thought this through too, too well, but my life as a Muslim, I just have to get through it and I have to get through it in the best manner, in the, you know, doing the best deeds, doing as many good deeds as possible. And every little challenge is a lot making me stronger, a lot testing me, a lot um, giving me an opportunity to do good, to do, um, to, 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 you know, ha like how I deal with these people who, are selling counterfeits as well. I mean, there's so many incidences where I could have just been like, no, that's it. Your account's blocked. I'm not doing nothing about it. I'm not going to get it reactivated. Da, da, da. No. If somebody genuinely comes back and says, oh, I didn't know, you know, I'm sorry, Facebook has blocked my account. Um, I'll write to Facebook and I can do that. I'll write to Facebook and I'll be like, you know, I'm, you know, this person's signed a contract, you know, signed a document to say they'll never sell fakes again. Please reinstate the account. And it does happen and has happened. People with Instagram accounts who've got thousands of you know, in, um, followers and et cetera have ended up selling counterfeits and have gone into this issue. I've helped them put that. So even me dealing with these people is a test. Like yeah. it's for me, it's a test and I have to deal with them in the best manner, in the best way. A last mm -hmm. test to me all the time. And, you know, for me, it's not about it's not about like I don't have like a target that um, we're going to be in, you know, 50 countries or we're going to have. For me, it's just like, you know, um, I start making dua a lot, you know. Give, give give blessings and every single day I'm blessed I'm blessed every single day and whatever I whatever I get is like huge it's like a massive blessing and I can't ask for more you know and um and that's that's how I get through it so it's like you know I don't you know it could depress you could I uh, could it can give you anxiety it, I know so many times I have thought like you know oh if I didn't have this issue I would be progressing more on that but I mean, really, how do I know that? I mean, this is being given, this is ignited like a fire in me. I'm just like ready to go every day. And like, you know, the days that I'm like not feeling very energized and a problem comes up, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire again, you know? <laughs> and it's like Allah's, Allah, Allah, Allah's given me these opportunities. And um, it's really for me to, to do it in the best way. And, mm, SubhanAllah, I love that, brother. And in the end, of course, like we all also know as Muslims that, you know, our risk is allocated to us, right? And whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever risk Allah has decreed for us, we will get no matter what. Yeah. And so no one can really steal anything from you because at the end of the day, no one can take away from your disc. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has your disc appointed to you and you will get it. And so we kind of have to also keep things in perspective and really, you know, address the situations accordingly, but also not necessarily have the fear like, well, oh, that person's taking something away from me. Because uh, no one can really truly take anything away from you, to be honest. Yeah. It's quite quite like profound way of thinking, right? It's like, mm. you know, if if you could lead, if you could, if you know, I try to kind of lead my life like that, that you know, and also like like when I pray and I'm in sujood, I'm always thinking, you know, like if I go today, I take nothing with me, like you know what I mean, like all this materialism and all of the wealth, you know, um, it's none of it comes with me except for the good deeds except for kind of you know good pious children that you leave behind mm. except for you know anything that you've done in in a charitable way you know um and 
that's such a profound you know concept to 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 gather but if you can if you can get that concept i think every day would be easy peasy and you know be a blessing mashallah bro can i can i tell you one thing man w- one thing that i'm actually mashallah i look at the sal- my salama and what you're doing and, and one thing that i'm actually jealous about and not jealous you know and like the evil eye kind of you know bismillah yeah. mashallah but i'm jealous in the fact that you guys mashallah with my salama you are helping so many families introduce to their kids salah, which is so yeah. beautiful, such so beautiful. One of the pillars of Islam, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that and add every single prayer that was prayed on this mat on your skills, yeah. inshallah, on the day of judgment. Uh, you know, what I mean, I mean, because I mean. you know, you're helping all these families, you know, educate their children on something that is so important in a fun and interactive and creative way, which is beautiful, mashallah. So, I, I really love that. I love that concept. I think it's so beautiful what you guys are doing. Um, you know, and you really do have all my support and, and all my well wishes, inshallah. And I want to ask you, you, if you know, could... on, on, yeah, that, sorry, on that point, it's amazing that you say that because that is the 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 point that made me do it. And mm. I tell I tell you why. So I got the product, it's all done, prototypes ready. I get an invoice from the factory, right? And it's like forty thousand odd dollars right i'm like forty thousand dollars like i'm I'm just a school teacher right and i'm like how am i going to do this right and of allah makes everything easy when you say bismillah when you put your faith in allah allah makes everything easy and i'm sat in in my office and i'm sat on the chair and i'm thinking i can walk away from this and i don't need to invest forty thousand pounds and that's fine you know or i could go into it and I could invest 40,000 pounds and, you know, it might not work, right? People might not like it. People might not get the concept. So I'm thinking, what do I do? And the thought that, that what you just said, that's the thought that came into my head. I said, if, if this could help one person um, pray, if this could help one, teach one person, one child how to pray, how to, and, and make them love Salah, that's it like my job's done you know um and that that's the reason that's the reason why i then said you know i said bismillah and i started the whole ball rolling i gave the deposit and um subhanallah you know it's just from there it just it just went you know every allah made everything easy i was able to mm-hmm. borrow some money from friends and family use my savings and things like that and i was able to i was also able to mitigate some some issues so uh, so this is something for like people looking at manufacturing I had to make um, 4,000 pieces. So what I ended up doing was I ended up buying the materials for 4,000 pieces, but I only made 2,000 pieces. In my head, Mm. I was thinking if it doesn't work, at least I won't need to, I'll just forfeit the material cost instead of the forfeit in the whole production cost. And then um, I also thought to myself that once I bring this in, if it doesn't work, um, then I'll just sell it at like cost value or just below cost value. I'll recoup a lot of the money and I'll be okay. So it was always kind of juggling those kind of like being quite smart about how you're going to go through that whole production process and, Mm -hmm. you know, mitigating your kind of like, you know, any big issues that you might come across, um, you know, mitigating your financial situation and things like that. And that's how we, and that's how we were able to do it. And so it was only after we sold the first 2000 pieces that we were a- had enough money to then buy the next part of the production. That's amazing. Sorry, Michelle, I, I love cut it. you up in the question. No, no, no. Well, I'm really glad you did. And it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful tangent. I'm glad you asked that. Cause actually one of the things I was going to ask you, uh, and I was just asking, you know, because you, you've done this, mashallah, now you're at a place where, you are, you know, impacting so many people in this beautiful way. Have you ever like received feedback or received a review from your customers that stood out to you or one that really just touched you? Made you feel like, wow, this is exactly why we're doing this. I'm sure you receive some every day, but is there one that stood out to you? Is there something that you can share with us? Um, you know, what? It's, it's a really awesome question. Um, and um, alhamdulillah, we, 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 get, we get feedback all the time. Um, and, um, just trying to, um, think of one, um, one that just comes to my mind right now is that there was a, there was, there, there, there was a, there was a mother who, um, who had the prayer mat and who took the prayer by my salama. And she sent us a picture of the my salama, uh, her child using the my salama. And, um, um, you know, we love those photos. Uh, you know, we, 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 we get those all the time. And then she sent us a picture of her child um 
on a normal traditional prayer map. And mm. she wrote three months later. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. That That is exactly what my salama is all about. Mm. So my salama is all about inspiring that love of salat like before you do anything right before you do before you teach them you know uh fatiha or sujood or ruku it's like getting them really wow salat like that experience right of a child wanting to go onto the prema wanting to kind of try it out once you've got that like you've got that child forever like literally like that child will have that memory if that's what i think will have that memory for a lifetime yeah. that positive memory will be there with, with that child for a lifetime and then it's a case of learning the the surahs learning the positions and learning um all of the things and then the way what i've always said the my salama is temporary right it's a temp it's it's there it's a it's an educational tool like mm -hmm. a book you get a textbook or something you learn it and then you put it away the same with this and then for me to see the child on a traditional prayer mat praying, I was like, wow, that's that's amazing. You know, um, that's what it's all about. Using the Masarama as your educational tool, learning from it, being inspired by it, loving Salah, and then praying on a traditional prayer mat for the rest of your life, five times a day. Yeah, yeah. For that's me, amazing, that's mashallah. Just... Yeah, definitely, man. And I think that's a beautiful way to introduce them to it. Again, you know, it's a lot... It, it makes the person or the, the child in this case, uh, you know, look forward to it because it, it makes it interactive. It makes it fun. It's, you know, it's a whole thing. Clicking the button, standing, following the, the directions, you know, so it's, it's, it's really a great, beautiful idea that you came up with here. Mm -hmm. I want to I ask you, um, you know, if you can give a few tips to entrepreneurs that are listening to this, maybe three tips. Let's think of three main things uh, that entrepreneurs are listening to this who want to create their own product maybe three things that they should know or three, three things that, you know, tips, lessons you've learned along the way that you can share with them. Um, that's a really difficult question. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, so what are the um, three biggest tips that in your journey that you feel like if you told yourself uh, in the beginning, like when, if you first started, you knew you're like, wow, this would have made it easier. And maybe that's a good way to think about it. Maybe. Um, okay. So the first thing, like, I think, I think, I, I'm being blessed with a, a very supportive network, mm. um, you know, friends, family, you know, um, children. I mean, my children were uh, my biggest support. Um, and I would say, like, if you've got an idea, if you've got some something, like, don't be afraid to show them, like, get their feedback. Because a lot of a lot of the times they will be very honest about it. And um, they will be looking at it from um, also a perspective that you're not. Like, you might be quite, like in the vision of it, what it could be. And they'll be looking at the realistic aspect of it. Like, it, is it gonna pay the bills tomorrow, you know? So, mm. so don't be afraid to kind of share your ideas. At the same time, don't share it with everyone. Like, honestly, like, like, like some people just don't like their job. Some people are always negative. Some people right. just, you know what I mean? Like some people are always got something to, bad to say. I mean, I'm not saying like sometimes it's, kind of can be helpful to listen to that but if there's somebody who like has never done anything in their life and then you show it to them and they're like oh that's not going to work like what kind of experience have they got of being able to say that's not going to work because they've never right. done anything in their life so um that's one thing kind of show people that you trust but sh don't show everyone mm -hmm. um the the next thing i would say um if you're really serious and you've got it to a point, you've got the design, you've got your branding, you've got your brand name and and, and you know what you're doing, right? You, you're going ahead with it. Um, I mean, what I should say actually is at some point uh, of your design, read Istahara, like seriously, like read Istahara, like that is, read it loads of times if you're not sure, like keep reading it, read it every day if you need to. Because honestly, for me, the way I look at Istahara is just asking Allah for guidance and that's it. Like Allah, I'm asking you like in a very professional way for guidance <laughs> in some ways. And then like Allah guides you, right? Whether that's good or uh, if it's good, Allah keeps, keeps you on the path. And if it's not, Allah push, takes you away from the path I, in a way that you don't even won't regret being on that path, right? So it's right. it's amazing. The Sahara is amazing. Yeah. So, um, and then I would then say, um, if I if if I could if I start if I started again, what I would probably do is first and foremost get my design and my trademark registered in China. Mm. 
I would get it registered in China. And, uh, and obviously in the country that you're in, but I would definitely get it registered in China because then you're protected. Like everything gets made in China. Um, or unless you're thinking about making it in Turkey or some other country, whichever country you're thinking about manufacturing there, get your design and, and trade uh, and, and logo registered in that country. So if, if you do then talk to those factories and they do end up copying, then you definitely got so much to, to kind of take legal action. Right. That's amazing, Marshall. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. So number one, share your idea and get feedback with people you trust. Number two, read Istikhara, ask for Allah's guidance. And number three, get your design and trademark registered in the country you're in, in China or where it's manufactured. So thank you so much for sharing those. I think those are some beautiful takeaways that people listening to this episode can take home to, you know, help them on their journey, inshallah. And that's what this is all about. And I really appreciate you sharing, you know, your knowledge with our listeners today. Uh, now, there's a question that I ask every single guest. Before we dive into some audience Q&A, there's some audience questions as well that came in. But there's a question that I ask every single guest that comes on this episode, and I, one of my favorites, really. And the question is the following. If you can meet Kamal from a number of years ago when you were first getting started, you were just about to launch My Salamat, you are just about to work on it, you are just about to create it, and you could tell him one thing that he could hold on to on his journey, right? One thing, kind of like a mantra, something to remember. What would that one thing be? What would you tell him? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm finding this question really difficult. Why it's a difficult question. Really it's difficult? a difficult question. You could tell him one thing that he could hold on to throughout his journey of entrepreneurship, throughout all the ups and downs, something they could hold on, hold on to that would help him throughout his journey, maybe keep him centered, keep him focused. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I, why am I finding this question so difficult? Um, what would I tell myself um, that would help me moving forward? Um, looking back, can we come back? Can we come back to this question? We can come back to this. No problem. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. No problem, dude. Well, uh, you know what? Is it just a difficult question? I mean, you can tell him one thing, right? You can tell him one thing. That he could hold on to. What, what would you? What would you? What would you say? What would you? What would you say? To tell yourself. Wow, that's a good question. No one, no one, no one turned the question around to me before on this podcast. So this is a first. It's interesting uh, that you're. I'm you're really shooting interested it back. to know. Actually, I mean, I'm really seriously interested to know. Yeah, well, I'll have to answer off the top of my head, uh, to be honest with you, because again, that's like that. You want this to feel genuine. If so, if I were to answer off the top of my head, I think for me, it would it would simply be. Take your time. I think that's what I would tell them because I'm someone who throughout this entire process, I always feel like I'm very much in a rush. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I'm always looking forward to the next thing. And I feel like if I'm not always kind of, you know, breaking my milestones and crushing my goals and, you know, progressing every single day, which is normally what you want to do, right? Because if you're not progressing, you're stagnating. But I, I kind of put my, on myself a lot of pressure to always move forward and move forward quickly and advance quickly. And I feel like over the last few weeks, uh, and maybe just this year in general, I feel like I've been a little bit more lenient on myself, That's a little amazing. bit more more graceful. You know, just giving myself the grace and the room to take a and little how, bit how, more how of my time. How has that made you yeah. feel? Honestly, a lot better. I mean, I, obviously, it's conflicting because there's still this kind of drive within me where I really want to feel like I'm progressing all the time, and I still feel sometimes like. Maybe I'm. I feel like I'm too slow. I'm too slow in developing new ideas and, and you know taking us to the next step and entrepreneur, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then again, I also also tell myself I'm okay where I am right now. And alhamdulillah, I'm happy and I'm blessed and I'm grateful that I'm able to work on this. And I don't need to rush the process. Yeah. So it's been it's been That's interesting. Amazing. I love that. I absolutely love that. I think I think that honestly that resonates with me and it's it's so true actually. And um, I, that would that. Actually, I'm going to tell myself that. <laughs> I love it. I'm actually going to tell myself that today. I love it. Because that is so good. And I think I would mm -hmm. add to that by just saying maybe from from me um, as, a, as a father of two, two amazing, beautiful children, I would just probably say to myself, um, just go home earlier sometimes, a lot more, a bit more mm -hmm. than I already do. Um, mm -hmm. Or um, kind of like 
just forget stuff on the weekend you know just yeah. just leave it it'll, it'll get done uh, i think that's yeah. important actually i think it also it resonates with you because it's, it's about time mm. it's about time and and yeah. giving time to um to people you know, like, and I, I'm, I'm sure you relate to this and i'm glad you do because i think you know when you look at someone like yourself uh mashallah i mean there's no way that you don't have that inner drive to move forward and succeed within you i mean eventually what it takes to really grow a company and even in the initial stages i think it does really take a little bit of that hustle mentality and, and initially we think that's really what it is it's working those 12 hour days and 16 hour days and you know putting it all into the business and that's the only way to move forward and Maybe it is sometimes, maybe initially you do have to put that work in, but I think once it takes off and once it's launched, I think sometimes keeping that going the whole way through starts to become detrimental, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where it's kind of, we have to maybe take a step back and start to delegate, start to build a team, mm -hmm. start to put systems in place and start to really maybe just, you know, evaluate things with a little more clarity, a little bit more wisdom and taking a little bit more of our time. So it's been an interesting transition for me as an entrepreneur to go through those stages from like the hustle mentality to now where I am. For sure. And I think also we probably, you can probably resonate with this as well because, because, and I, I've, I've, I've spoken to quite a few people who, who have set up their own companies um, who have the same kind of feeling that, um, or the experience, experience the same thing where because you set it up, and you've gone through hours and hours and hours, it's so difficult to trust other people with it, you know, mm. the delegation. It's like, for me, I this is one of my main biggest struggles is like passing on work or passing on projects to people, but like trusting that they're gonna do it. Um, and um, because you just wanna do everything yourself and yeah. you can't, you can't, and it's not, it's not you're not meant to. And mm. um, you know, th th there's, Burnout is a real thing, you know, burning out, like getting to a point where like you, 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 and it's so bad because you burn out and then you're like, that's it. You're like inactive for weeks even sometimes mm -hmm. um, because you just can't mentally focus on what you want to do. You know, men the, the mental brain, the brain is so powerful in, um, in controlling everything. It's not, people always think like, oh, you physically have to be, you know, you have to go to the gym you have to, and yeah, you do, but you know, you also have to have, you know, um, almost like a routine for your brain. Like you have a routine for your physical self when you go to the gym. You need to almost have like a routine for your brain. And um, I think for me, it's it's about kind of switching off completely when I go go home and see my kids and like spending time with them and listening to their stories and and kind of doing painting with my daughter. My daughter loves painting and she's so artistic and those kind of things. And I like that's it. Yeah. Um, I'm playing chess at the moment. <laughs> so, I love it. Um, but yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we can connect with that. I think maybe someone listening to this, you know, they might be in the initial stages and they're like, okay, maybe this is what I'm going to get to. And it's okay if you're not there yet, you know, but yeah, you will and, get there. And you know, also, I mean, like, like, okay, so like, it like, like, alhamdulillah, like praying, like, and it's not just like praying like five times a day. It's It's like literally like saying to yourself, you know, I'm going to take that time out, you know, mm. that is my time out. I'm not going to like quickly do it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I've still got will do. And, but because I've got so much going on, so much craziness in my head, yeah. you know, I'll purposely go into do. I'll yeah. purposely go into will do again. I'll take that time out, go to the bathroom, okay, run the water, you know, splash it, dry yourself, go through the, that whole process and then pray because i know I, because i've got so much craziness in my head right now because i've just been you know on a one hour conversation with somebody or you know i've had to deal with this problem or that problem and if i pray right now it's not gonna like in this state it's not gonna i'm not gonna like get what i need from it the prayer literally i love it because you know you get up in the morning you pray for joe and then like i get the kids to school and everything and then like you work good number of hours and then it's the hot time and then you pray the heart and it's like that break it's like a proper break for you and then you might eat something and then you go home and get the kids and there's asa time and then soon after it's maghrib now and then like these are all like allah's design like allah's the best of designers right allah's yeah. designed our day like like nobody else can ever design a day like that it's so oh. amazing if we do it if we do it properly and i think it's the kind of probably the answer to every 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 situation that we come across. 100%, 100%, brother. I'm really glad that you shared that, man. And I think that resonates with 
what you're trying to do here. You're trying to bring that gift to other people and more people, inshallah, and more families. And I think it's really beautiful. We have a few questions from the audience that I also want to kind of squeeze in here in this episode today, inshallah, with you. If that's okay. So we'll go through a few. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. So uh, we have one here from um, our listeners. And uh, it's an interesting question, actually. So I have uh, a few friends who are in the innovation business that I've consulted with on their business. And this theft issue where we spoke of earlier about, you know, copying ideas, et cetera, causes analysis paralysis. So entrepreneurs, they self-sabotage marketing their products on, on platforms like Amazon, eBay, et cetera, because their logic is marketing means exposure, which means possibly theft. So what would you advise for Muslim entrepreneurs in this situation where they may have a certain fear uh, because they're scared that their product might be copied if they go on other platforms or market their product? Yeah, I think like it's going to sound um, quite negative, but I, I would just go with like, like whether you show it or not, if somebody sees it and they like it, they're going to copy it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, if, if right. somebody wants your product, whether it's, you know, it's selling, uh, you know, million, co million copies a day or, you know, selling two copies a day. If somebody really wants to copy it, they're going to copy it. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah it is it's not like but by not marketing and not getting that out there it is um you know um it's detrimental to you to the to the person right so i would say amazon has an amazing process uh for removing counterfeit products i would get brand registered which means having a trademark um and then registering that trademark with amazon okay mm -hmm. amazon has a it's, it's a whole site for it it's called brand registry like that so um and then i would register that so then you have no fear of of, of posting mm -hmm. it on amazon things like that um mm -hmm. but don't don't stop marketing like marketing is is you know i i we say right now in the office we're, we're a marketing company right now because we have the product the product's done it's ready and we completely we, we, we develop it all the time um but really how are people going to know about the product unless we market like yeah. marketing is so important for entrepreneurs. You know, you can have the best idea in the world um, and you can have the best product in the world, but nobody's going to buy it unless they know about it. Nobody's going to yeah. buy it unless they um, they see it or they they understand it or they know what the features are. And in order to do that, you have to make videos, you have to make photos, you have to get reviews, you have to like speak to people, you have to speak to uh, influencers and get influencers to talk about it. You have to get it on websites, you have to get blogs about it. You know, uh, you got to you got to do some ads, Facebook ads, Google ads. You know, and you yourself, you got to talk about it. You got to go on to yeah. you know onto your show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know. You've got to get into uh, Umar Panir and talk about your product and get it yeah. out there, inshallah. Inshallah, definitely, hundred percent, man. I, I like, I really like the fact that you said that because a lot of people don't realize the importance of marketing, and they think, oh, well, marketing is just you know an extra thing, and you know I'll I'll deal with it, I'll get to it when I need to, or you know th they think to themselves, uh, you know I tried ads once, it didn't work, it doesn't work for me, right? And sure, people sometimes they try advertising, they try a marketing process or system or strategy that doesn't work, but that doesn't mean you give up. It means you, that one doesn't work for you, and you try another one, and you keep trying because. You know, if you don't have a, a system in place to generate sales consistently, it's really hard to maintain your business, right? So it's it's so important. Uh, and I want to transition to another question here from my audience, inshallah. I'll try to uh, grab two more. Uh, one of them is from uh, our viewers on Facebook. In your opinion, how should a good design process start? So it's a bit more of a, an open-ended question. Um, but do you have any tips for our listener here? Oh, pretty much all of my design design process starts with a problem. It's, it's okay. really all about solving a problem. And uh, for me, it's, you know, alhamdulillah, I've been blessed that I've been able to solve uh, problems for, um, you know, the guests of Allah, going for Hajj. I've been able to solve this issue that my son was having initially. You know, it is quite personal. I think designing something, um, you know, it, or coming up with an idea for something is quite personal. It's something that you've come across, you've, you've experienced that problem. And then because you've experienced that problem, Possibly many more people have experienced that problem, right? And then you, you know, it's about then finding this like solution for that problem. So you design something, you make something that solves that problem. And then it's about, you know, um, you know, with great products, you need great 
great branding you need great yeah. you know you, you, you need people need to know understand it properly straight away you know and how do you communicate that right do you communicate that through photos and images and um and and, and illustrations and videos right so it's it's really for me that's the design that was the design so for me the design process was a problem design the solution for it getting the prototype made showing some people that i trust uh getting some feedback on it and then taking it to the next step maybe redesigning it developing it more looking at the branding at the same time looking at the the the, the name that it could it could take um and then looking at kind of imagery and and and, and illustrations that would explain the product mm -hmm. to somebody who has never used it before and being able to communicate that uh you know very simply effectively people don't have time you know um you know i, I i'm 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 always try reducing emails because emails are always yeah. long, and I was like, no, just just put a paragraph in there or make something bold because that's the bit that we want them to to read. <laughs> so, right. so you know, it's all about kind of like you know getting out there in, in a simple way, and uh, obviously along the whole process, research. You know, research is it already out there? Is it already done? If it's done, can it be done better? Is if it's you know if it's if it's done, has it been communicated properly? You know, if not, maybe you can join partners with that company and 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 um, you know, if if you really want to solve that problem and it's already been solved, then join partners with a company and then make it better for them by maybe yeah. communicating that issue in a more effective way so that you yourself can benefit um, from the sale of those products. Um, yeah. You know, it's um, I always say. I mean, it's, I always say you know um, to, to 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 lots of people especially the ones who are, um, for us, it's like the ones who are selling cannabis, like, why didn't you just come to us directly, you know? Um, you know, just come to us and, you know, we can work together on this. Um, and you don't need to go and sell a fake, which is, a, which is a, you know, illegal and haram, right? So, right. and it defeats, defeats the whole reason why you would, you would sell an Islamic product, right? Yeah, so. definitely. Uh, I'm really glad you said that. Actually, there's a, there's, there was someone asking in the comments, uh, that do you offer, you know, uh, essentially the option for people to kind of sell my salamat in other countries for you? Is that is that an option that you guys have available? Hundred percent. I mean, like this is the one of the you know best ways we've grown is by having local people take my salama and sell it locally because we don't know that local market only lo like the right. local people know it so well. They know the shops. They know who to go to. They know how to sell it. They know what to say. They know the communication of that language, so 100%. Yeah, for sure. I mean, email us um, or get in touch with us. Uh, we have a form on our website for people awesome. who want to resell it, wholesalers. Uh, there's an actual uh, whole page on wholesale, how we can support you as well. So we don't just let you. We don't just sell the product to you. Um, we actually work with you to market it, to 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 work with um, you know influencers or ads and things like that to make sure that people in your country know about it. And we alhamdulillah have a good understanding of a process mm -hmm. and we can then see if we can implement that uh, and modify that process for you in, in your country. Amazing, mashallah. I'm really glad that we touched upon that in case, you know, when, when someone listens to this episode and think, thinks to themselves, I want to try to help uh, bring this product to my country, then, you know, that's an option for you. Go on mysalamat.com and, uh, you know, fill out the form and, and reach out to Brother Kamad. And there's one last one that we're going to take. And this one is uh, from one of our YouTube uh, listeners, Shaima. She's asking, can you ask him advice on any entrepreneur struggling with fear of failure or fear of success or both how to overcome it? So I think it's a good, a good place to uh, to kind of wrap up this episode, talking about fear a little bit, you know, entrepreneurs who face fear on a daily basis, yeah. whether it's fear of failure, fear of success. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, yeah. So like, honestly, like I've, I'm, I've never been one of those people where like, you know, high risk and high return. Right. I kind of like, I don't believe in that. I mean, mm. I believe in, you know, calculated risk. So you cal you 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 calculate the risk. You 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 write it down. You you understand what the risk is. So so I'm gonna invest. You know I'm gonna invest a thousand thousand dollars for example in something. The return could be you know three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars for example. But the loss could be a thousand dollars. Now, um, how can I mitigate that 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 loss? So um, so. I would calculate it in the way that okay, I get a thousand pro, I spend a thousand pounds, I get a hundred products, for example, and if I don't sell those hundred pounds at the price that I want to sell it at, I sell it at my cost price, and therefore then I haven't lost anything, but I've gained a wealth of knowledge and 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 um, um, you know 
skill set because I've actually been able to take something to the market and I've tested it and solved the problems. And the problems are great because don't look at the problems and the situations you come across like a negative, like, oh my God, that's it. If it wasn't for that problem, I'd be really successful. No, you're going to be successful because of that problem, because you're now going to be able to solve another problem. And that problem is going to make you even more educated and even more better at what you're doing. So each of the problems, each of the situations as an entrepreneur, you just have to have that mindset that, you know, they're all, they're all there to help me reach higher, higher and higher. The minute that you actually come across no problems and no situations, is that, it's probably the minute that you're probably not growing at all. Like you're probably like just really comfortable and you are where you are and you're not going to go any higher. And in fact, you're more likely to go lower because you're not like continuously developing yourself. So the problems and situations don't, don't tackle them like with fear, tackle them with, with energy and tackle them with, 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 with kind of fire in your belly and say like, I'm going to go like, this is the problem. How can I solve it? Who's the best person to help me in this? And there's so many people out there that will help you and support you. You just, you also have to have, a, you just also have to have a way of asking, I mean, in a way that you're comfortable with and the person that you're asking is also comfortable to answer your question, right? Or help you with that. So yeah, I don't know if that. No, definitely. Well, I'm really glad that you shared some actual, you know, tangible advice on this. And I think that's really the way to go. In the end of the day, you have to take those steps and you have to, you know, as you mentioned, do the research, calculate your risk, consult people who know better than you. And you have to take all of these steps to be, able, to be able to then, you know, address that fear instead of just saying, well, you know, okay, well, I feel it. Let me move forward. Sure. But also, you know, get more educated. And I think, you know, knowledge is, is the enemy of fear, right? Because we fear what is unknown to us. But once we attain more knowledge, then the fear mitigates. Just like, you know, um, someone who's uh, afraid of, of spiders might, feel, might be really scared every time a spider pops up. But if you just go and learn, oh, well, all the spiders, for example, in my country, Canada, are not venomous. There's no way they can hurt me or bite me. Maybe that helps to know a little bit, right? And then it's not, it's not going to get bit and get poisoned and die. So knowledge helps when you know you're able to work on. Go ahead. That's a really good. That's a really good uh, analogy though as well because what you could then do is because my wife's not scared of spiders at all. <laughs> so I would get my wife to go and pick up the spider <laughs> and show me. And I have now just had. A, a helping hand right and that, that's mm. how and then because like they've shown me it's not anything to be scared of um and you know they can hold it so i can hold it as well and that's what i'm i think that's what i mean when i say go and ask for help right ask mm. some people to support you and help you because yeah. they're not necessarily going to just do it for you but they will just show you that it's possible and it's nothing to be worried about sometimes you sometimes people just need to hear you can do this you've got this you've got yeah. this you know and i do that all the time i speak to lots of people or entrepreneurs as well and they're always like you know this not always but sometimes they're like oh i got this and i'm like no you got this I, I, you got this i don't even give them advice i just say to them you got this and they're like oh yeah yeah, yeah i got this i got this so. <laughs> sometimes people just need someone to believe in them right it's kind yeah, of love so brother, you should so you shared so much beneficial information, so much value on this episode. And again, you know, you shared your time so generously with us today. So Rizakallah khair for that. Really, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And I'm sure the people listening in have also learned so much. Where can people go if they want to purchase a my salama? They want to support you guys, you know, they want to follow your journey, be part of it, inshallah. Where should we get tell people to go listening to this episode? So you could you can go to www.mysalama.com or you can just Google mysalamat.com and that way you might find somebody in your local country uh, who's who's actually got the mysalamat. So, awesome. um, you know, we're based in the UK. Uh, we do international delivery. Um, sometimes it is better uh, for you to just go to your local store or, you know, speak to your local, um, you know, um, website. Um, sometimes people feel more comfortable that way. So no problem. Uh, you can just Google mysalamat. All right, beautiful. My Salamat, Salah, S A L A H M A T dot com. Check it out, guys. Go and support them. Purchase some My Salamat and send us a photo. Um, post the photo in our Facebook group or, you know, DM us a photo on Instagram so we can forward it to uh, Kamal. Let him know that, you know, you listened to the episode and you went and got one for yourself, for your children. Trust me, guys. I don't have kids myself, but if I did and when I do, 
I'm definitely getting one of those, inshallah, because I know that it's amazing. So um, I look inshallah. forward to that, uh, inshallah. And I'm sending, I'm sending money, inshallah. <laughs> I love that. I love that, brother. Jazakallah khair. So come on, honestly, it was a pleasure. Yeah, it was you. an honor to speak to you, brother. Uh, and really, I uh, absolutely love this episode. So thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we'll no, see you again. No, thank you so much. Inshallah. You've been absolutely amazing. You know, great questions. And, you know, you made me feel really comfortable. So thank you so much for this, for this My uh, pleasure, opportunity brother. to come on, come on here. And I honestly have been looking forward to this for a long time too. So alhamdulillah. <laughs> so thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, brother. It was honestly Thank such you. an honor to have you. And guys, you know the drill. If you enjoyed this episode, just make sure to show us your support by subscribing, rating this podcast. And of course, follow us on your favorite social platforms. You can search Omarpreneur, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are. And of course, if you want help with starting your own business, um, we just spoke about entrepreneurship in this episode, how to launch your idea. If you need more help and more support, you want to speak to someone, go to Omarpreneur.com slash call. And we'll speak to you for free to understand what your goals are and how we can help, inshallah. Until then, uh, please do go ahead and follow my salama at mysalama.com. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And uh, make sure to show them your support, show them your love, and let them know that you listened to this episode. Uh, I'd be really grateful if you did. See you guys next time. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.